It is overcast today. Is it the best time to film? Probably not. Are we going to film this now anyways? Yes, we are. Because I do not have a lot of time. So, hello. Welcome back to my channel. This is Alicia Costanzo and I'm going to be talking about books today. That was a kitty. I am going to be doing my restrictive reading wrap up. AK I am going to talk about the books that I read and I'm going to use one word to try to help me summarize and keep me focused on my review or discussion. Yeah, it's the only thing that keeps me organized. So let's shift you this way so I can put some books up next to me as I talk about them. So this is the first month that I played my new reading game and I had way too many rolls. I had way too many doubles. It was difficult to get through. But let's go through the things that I did read. So first I rolled a romance and I picked Real Good Man by Megan March. So Real Good Man, my word, is pie. All right, so Real Good Man is a romance that starts over text messaging because of another friend needing to communicate, not having her phone. Yes, the whole start, this whole thing started in uh, this young woman keeps texting and saying, would a real man do this? Would a real man do that? For all of her horrible dates that she's going on. And it's just the flirtation and the like outrageousness of this, this, this protagonist was amazing. So I really like this one. I think I gave it a five. I did. I gave it five stars in Pi because the other women who want this man, because a whole small town does, try to offer him things like pie in order to get him in the sack, aka pie and you know get knocked up and catch them a man so she the protagonist oh why can't i think of her name banner so the protagonist banner the female protagonist banner is not like that at all she's a the queen of one night stands and so uh, again pie they work out pretty well and there's a lot of humor and there's a lot less of the thriller stuff in this one and i'm totally okay with that so it was a good one it's my first roll. I completed it. Yay. So roll number two was my 21 before 2021 and it was The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. And my I did complete it, kind of. It's off my list at least. I DNF'd this one pretty quickly. I think after the second or third chapter. Less, I was about 5%, I think, into the book. My word for this was expo, aka, aka exposition, because it was drowning in it, and I started skimming to see if something happened, and I had some quirky but not great dialogue. So, very kind of stock characters. I just, I wasn't into it. It wasn't my thing. I know a lot of people like the book. I'm glad a lot of people like the books. It's on my list because I heard a few booktubers talk about it, and it's just not for me. That's, exposition too much of it for me that often happens for me in epic fantasy that might be a trope of sci-fi but sci-fi that does that is not my kind of sci-fi so but it's off my list so yay roll number three was a uh, cover color and i spun that wheel and i believe it was black and so i read i'm thinking of ending things being read and i did complete this one i gave it i believe a three i gave it a three stars and my word for this was suicide because like you knew something like that was coming the whole time and there's kind of a false story within a story in this which bothered me a little bit i didn't find it all that scary it did feel very psychological philosophical and i mean i got through it it was rather short there was a hell of an atmosphere the atmosphere got me the inkling that bad things were going to happen was present a lot towards the end not so much in the beginning although there are some crazy phone calls but i wasn't scared and maybe that's because i've experienced a lot of horror stories before like i've watched mostly a lot of horror movies even b-rated horror movies and it just mm, it, it was okay i can see a lot of people being scared by it though so but for me my experience was a three the characters were pretty good i wish the twist wasn't as obvious but check i completed that one my role number four was a mystery and i chose angel's flight by michael connelly for that and i did complete this one it was really easy to complete it because it was the first bosch audiobook that i got my hands on so i gave this five stars as well and my word for that is corruption and i do mention often that bosch books deal with corruption and corrupt cops but it was like rampant rampant and 
And the instincts that Bosch had for who was corrupt were like spot on, not trusting you know, so-and-so, I'm not gonna say who it was. The karma, that should have been my word, the karma in this, that corrupt cop, I think literally got torn limb from limb by a crowd of people. So yeah, that was pretty interesting. Loved it. We'll continue on with the series. I'm trying to read another one right, I think I'm in the middle of two right now. Or I'm in the middle of one and about to start two. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. But yes, five stars, corruption, karma. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I forgot one of my books. So roll number five was my first line challenge. And I did complete my first line challenge, the actual video. I went and did the challenge. And I came back with a book. So I will link that there and below. So you guys can check it out. It's pretty quick. It's just me looking at some books and talking about the book I, I found. Which was this one. And you can tell my bookmark. I'm not very far. I just think it's something that I'm not in the mood for at the moment, if that makes sense. But I'm going to try to read it in February. So this is going to roll over. I'm going to finish it. So I did not complete all of my books. And I am going to pull from my punishment jar at the end of the video. So stick with me. So roll number six was a retelling. And I chose... Recipe for Persuasion by Smiley Dev. And I didn't get to read this one either. A lot of the physical books, like the ones that I physically have to read with my eyeballs rather than listen to, I've been struggling with because I've been working and when I'm not working, I'm trying to write and edit the project that's going to be coming out this year. So, and the side spoiler for writing, I'm getting my writing in most of it. I'm pretty close to my words, my goals, but the thing, the story, the last bit wants to be a lot longer than I planned it to be, so yay for that all right so yes uh recipe for persuasion i didn't get to it it's on my holes it just popped up i'm going to try to read it this month because i only gave myself like six books to read this month and i generally eat read eight to ten so let's hope i get to it this time yes yes roll number seven was over 500 pages and i chose the poet by michael connelly for that i am currently reading this so I don't know if that counts towards or against me, but I will finish reading it in February. I am reading it at home or listening to it at home because uh, I need the Wi-Fi for the version of it that I have. So I'm do trying to do it while I cook, but currently also watching Rizzoli and Isles again. And yeah, sometimes, I don't know. I just need to make myself listen to it and stop being a fuss budget. So rule number eight was a dark cover and I chose Bad Motherfucker by Jacinda Wilder and I again didn't get to this. I really want to read this series. I don't know if it's because I feel like my library books take precedence. I own this book so I should just go read it. I bet you if I borrowed it from the library I would read it much faster. Things take longer when I don't have a deadline. So yeah, yeah. Not, at least not one that I can push back as long as I want because it's I own it. Which I've done with other things. Artemis Fowl. So I didn't do this one either. I do hope to get to it either this month or next month. That would actually be a good, good one to read for Valentine's Day, but we'll see what happens. And my ninth roll was not of my comfort zone spinner and I ended up getting Thriller. And so I chose Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. And I did finish reading this book. Wait, wait. I chose Eyes and I gave it a 4.5. Pretty darn good, especially for being in a category that I don't typically like to read. Like I read The Haunting of Hill House and I didn't find it all that scary. I had a hard time with it a lot until like the last couple of pages and then the ending. This one was far more modern. There was a lot of lies, like so many lies. Like she knows her parents are lying about this haunted house. They both keep saying it's true and then she inherits it and she goes there. And she meets all the people and interacts with them and uncovers all of the lies. Like the... my only qualm with it was, I feel like this is going to be a spoiler. So if you haven't read it, you might skip a few seconds. But the fact that it wasn't paranormal enough. By the end of it, it wasn't paranormal enough. And that's what I'm going to say about that. But there was a lot of twists and turns. And I, was, I wasn't I was scared, but I was waiting for the action, if that makes sense. And the action does come. A lot of the time I felt that anticipation, that tension. And she did really, really good with that. And again, a good juxtaposition of the past in the present so we get her during her her being in her 30s and her father having died and her mother being away and her going to the house by herself to uncover these lies about these ghosts in her childhood and then we're hearing the book that he wrote her father wrote on the story that influenced her so much and how it correlates with the things that she is experiencing as we slowly uncover the mystery 
of this house and the lies and it was good and I liked it and I would recommend it. I only, I felt like parts of it were too easy which is why I gave it the 4.5 instead of full five stars. Paranormal parts were too easy. Okay. And the last book I had on my TBR for January was Torrent by Jim and James. There's another 21 before 2021 pick and I did not pick it up whatsoever, unfortunately. I would like to this one since it's really short and then by that I mean it's under 300 pages and I think I'll know rather quickly whether I can get through it or not so I would like to give it a try in February. Obviously with all of these rollovers I'm probably not going to get to them all by the end of February so we'll see what happens with them if they go into... I have another jar of uh, half-read books and that is a, a, one of the things on my, my challenges list. I might get to them for that. I do not know yet. I might just eventually get to them. That happens sometimes. But anyways, I did read a few other books that were not on my TBR because they were accessible for my ride to work in audiobooks. So let's talk about those. I also read A Darkness More Than Night by Michael Connelly. This is one of those books that was both bosh. It was, oh, it was another character to a retired detective character. And at first I read, found him rather tedious, but then I eventually got like really into his perspective. I ended up giving this five stars, five star, 4.5 stars, I believe it was. Yeah, 4.5 stars. And the word for this was darkness, which is in the title was perfect because the murders were dark. The characters who were dealing with the murders were dark. The cover up was dark. The trying to put suspicion on someone else was dark. The, like it was, it was just so well done. And Michael Connelly knows how to twist a tail in, it, in such a fantastic way. He did a good job with A Darkness More Than Night, but there was a lot of shoulder shaking, which makes me think this instead of shrugging. I don't know why he couldn't just say shrug. It takes way less words <laughs> than shoulder shrugging. So, or the variations of it that he used, and he used it quite often more times than like multiple times in a scene, one right after another, and then like it just like slapped me in the face with ugh, an editor should have caught this. That's the only reason why I put a 4.5 was just that. That's it. It was good otherwise. Yep. So I also read, and this I guess is not an audiobook, but after I finished reading Real Good Man, I had to read Real Good Love, which was the sequel to the duet with Banner and Ah, oh, what is his name? Logan. Banner and Logan. And I think I also gave this a five stars. I also gave this five stars. Again, Megan March. My word for a phrase for this is box of dicks. Because I can't tell you how many times Banner said box of dicks. Because she's trying to run her own vibrator dildo company. And she keeps getting delivered box of dicks. And there's a whole like sub story thread weaved through both books on that and so it was fantastic. It was hilarious. There was a bit more action and thriller in the second book. I definitely suggest reading any of Megan March. I freaking love her. The last book that I read this month was We Are Okay and this is by Nina LaCour I think is how you say her name. This was about a, a young girl going through grief in coming to terms with having essentially uh, ghosted her best friend after her grandfather died. She went off to college and she deals with a lot of things that her grandfather didn't tell her because they had such a good, what she thought was a good relationship, that they trusted each other and they didn't go into each other's rooms or other parts of the house. And her mother died when she was really young. And so he's dealing with the grief of her, you know, his daughter being dead and taking care of his grandchild. And it, it seemed like there was a lot of love. I made me cry so many, so many times. And that that's why my word for this is tears. Like I just bawled through many parts of this. It was a really good story and I like where it went. I like what happened. I like how deep she got into it. Um, I like how she didn't take too much space to get where she needed to go, but still got to a good place in a good quick session. Like she didn't draw it out too much, which was, can't, tell you how bad it is when those kinds of things are drawn out and I loved the ending. So I'm gonna look for more stuff by Nina LaCour. I hope that's how you say her name. All right, let's give a few stats real quick. So I read seven books. I DNF'd one. I am currently reading one. I read 2,305 pages. I read 50 hours, 28 minutes, and 19 seconds, which equates to two days and two hours, 28 minutes, and 19 seconds. And I'm including the poet in that because I did, I do have a chunk of it done, so I do feel like it counts. 
pages, at least in, in my, my listening, not in my pages. I don't know what the page equivalent of that is without reading the whole book. And let, let's not try to force me to do math, okay? So real quick, I forgot some stats. So let's talk about categories that I read. I read this month and I read seven adult and one young adult, which is really odd for me. Usually the skew is very opposite of this. Um, and I read three mystery slash thrillers. I read two romance, one horror, one sci-fi, and one contemporary. While this has shifted, I read no fantasy. I read no fantasy. What? 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 <sighs> okay. All right. That was weird. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled program, yeah? So I do have to get a punishment book. That was the wrong jar. Okay, so my punishment jar is actually a jar that my stepson got me from Branson when he went on a trip there. And it was Branson was so expensive I can only afford half a cup, so it's half a cup. And I chose this not because I dislike the cup, but because it's small. So I'm hoping to not need a whole lot of punishments. So here we go. Got just a few in there. If you have suggestions that you, books you think I'd hate, <laughs> or that you really, really want me to read and I are not in my comfort zone or my style, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so, what does this say? Oh, find me that way. <sighs> this better be an audiobook. Okay, so, this is gonna be Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness. I don't know if I can get it so that you can see it. You know I'm not lying. This better be an audiobook, otherwise I'm gonna have to punish myself again because I won't get through it. It's like, does it count if I, do I have to read the whole thing? What if I DNF it? I don't think I can DNF it because it's punishment. <sighs> Guys. All right, well, there you go. I'm gonna punish myself with Deborah Harkness. Hopefully it's not that terrible. All right, anyways. If you made it this far, let me know if you've ever read anything by Deborah Harkness. I'd like to know your opinion on... Oh, what the hell is her book called? <sighs> I don't know. Let me know if you've ever read her. Anyways, thanks for joining me, guys. I will see you next time. All right, bye!